So greetings, friends and followers. This is Nurses Talking. I am Del Barzi. And as always, if you like what you see and hear, subscribe. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. Here on Nurses Talking, we speak to nurses anywhere in the world and at any stage in their nursing journey. And today, I am very, very pleased to welcome Jacqueline Bones. Jacqueline is a registered nurse and she's an entrepreneur. So welcome, Jacqueline. Hi, thank you. Yeah, and I probably should have said you're known on social media as Miss Jackie. Yes, I am. Okay. <laughs> so first things first, I usually want to know why people are nurses. So why why are you a nurse? So I feel like that nursing has been my calling ever since I was young. I'm the oldest in my family, and so I've always taken care of other people. And so mm. I've always um, taken care of my sisters. Uh, when I was young, I had a uh, aunt that was in a wheelchair. I would help her. And so I felt like that that was just my natural calling. And I feel blessed mm -hmm. that I actually found something that I was good at and that I actually like to do at a young age. Some people spend their whole lifetime trying to figure out what their purpose is. And so mm -hmm. um, I felt like I was destined to um, to be a nurse because I'm a nurturer and I like to take care of people. Um, I yeah. like to serve. And uh -huh. so my original plan was I was going to go to medical school um, and then life kind of got in a way to where I couldn't do that. I was signed up for the military and I was going to be a doctor um, and go to school, med medical school for the military. And uh, and I had to do a, do a detour. So I started all the way from being a CNA, which is a certified nursing assistant. And then I worked my way up um, into going to school to become a nurse. I see. I see. Awesome. Awesome. Because, you know, as you said, many times people don't get to it until until later. So if this is something you wanted to do since you were a child, when you actually became a nurse, was it what you thought it was going to be? Early on, yes. I was very enamored with my career uh, being a young, I guess I, I was a pretty young nurse. I finished school when I was about 23 years old um, when I became a nurse. I was pretty young when mm. I first started. And so um I love what I was doing, but then I started to really uh, realize what uh, healthcare really involves. And so um, it's more than just taking care of the patient yeah. or the person that's sick at the bedside. There's a lot more um, into healthcare than just that. So mm -hmm. the longer I got into my nursing career, the more that I learned about the whole aspect of he healthcare as a, as a whole. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. And the challenges that come with that. Yes. So... How, what 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 kind of areas did you work? I worked in um I'm primarily emergency room. I've been doing the emergency room nursing for about 15 years. I've done nursing home, assisted living, I've done home health and ICU, and then just working on a basic uh, medical floor. Um mm -hmm. I felt many different positions just from being a staff nurse to uh being a nurse supervisor, nurse manager, and then working in executive leadership as a nurse executive. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So having done all of this, worked in so many different areas and worn so many different hats, is there anything you would like to see change? There is a, there are several things that need to change in healthcare. Um, I would say that one of my biggest challenges uh, starting out, I'm from a very small town, um, is being a minority um, in nursing because the nurse is seen as a leader um, in the in the whole aspect of healthcare, you know, you have your physician and then you have the nurse. And so being a minority mm -hmm. nurse early on in my career was a very big challenge. Um, I've been called everything from a kitchen staff member to housekeeping to actually people refusing for me to be their nurse um, and taking care of them due to being a minority. So that was like mm -hmm. one of the biggest challenges. And so I think there needs to be a lot of education that all nurses across all, all aspects are good and we all have the same knowledge base we all go to the same school we all have the same education and so um and people need to recognize that and not just base the nurse on what they look like so that's one of the major things that needs to be changed mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and 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 i would i would have to say that perhaps some of that needs to start with nursing itself and with our own education in nursing school, because you know, as I speak to people, um, one of the one of the challenges that they face is not just the the, the consumer who um, is is a little reluctant to have them take care of them, 
But even in nursing school, many people are are told, well, you know, you don't belong here. Yeah, yeah. And 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 in my 18 years, um, actually I've been told that uh that I'm the closest that a minority has ever been to them. <laughs> like they've never <laughs> been that close, you know, in such a personal um, you know, mm -hmm. they're in they have a gown on and I'm doing a blood pressure if I'm touching them and doing, you know, yeah. IV things like that, mm -hmm. then actually I'm mm -hmm. the this is the closest they've ever really been to uh, someone of a minority. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, which speaks volumes, actually. But okay, it I'll does. leave that one alone. <laughs> it speaks volumes. So, how one of the actually that really is one of the goals of of this channel is to is to show uh, um, to consumers. One is to show nurses what nurses are doing and can do, but I also want consumers to see because when we when you tell someone you're a nurse, the first thing they think is this question actually is what hospital are you working? Yeah. Um, and if you if you did if you tell someone you work from home, well, I mean, well, what kind of a nurse could you possibly be? <laughs> you know, um, yeah. and so I want to expand that view. And so when I see people like you doing stuff outside of that, you know, norm or quote unquote norm. Um, I feel it's important for us to get there, get that stuff out. What would you say though is your greatest achievement so far? I know you're a CEO of a yes. big um, vision company. Yeah, so one of my, one of the biggest achievements that I like to say that I have accomplished is I haven't lost my compassion and empathy for what I do. Um, I've worked with a lot of nurses over the years, some older, some younger, and nurses go through what they call compassion fatigue. So I think one of the things that I feel like I've achieved is I still have a love for what I do. I'm still very compassionate about what I do. Um, even though I have my own business, I still work as just a staff nurse right now. I still work in the hospital three days a week. I'm not mm -hmm. in management or anything like that. And I still take care of my patients the same because I still have that compassion and empathy and I still love what I do, um, whether it's here in my own office or whether it's at the hospital. So that's my biggest achievement that I like to say that I I that I'm feel accomplished and that just further solidifies the fact that I'm actually doing what I'm destined to do because I still you, have love. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That, that, that really is awesome. And as you spoke about, you still have it. Um, you you talked about compassion fatigue and all of that. There's a lot of talk also about burnout. Yes. How do you cope with that? And how have you prevented yourself from feeling that? I would say the biggest challenge that I really struggled with was during the pandemic. Um, because my my you know, my mission as a nurse is to help people feel better is to help people improve. Now, there are times when you're not going to be able to do that, but I felt so lost during the pandemic. And I felt like, I feel like so many nurses and doctors felt lost because there was nothing yeah. that we could do. We were mm -hmm. doing everything that we knew in our medical knowledge and people still and died. It you wasn't know? enough. And so, and so I feel like that was the biggest challenge to where um, I still struggle with that right now um, at times of not really being able to help people because that's why we're in this profession is to help and there was just nothing that we can do. Mm -hmm. So burnout is is real. Um, I think it's because there are some nurses who are afraid to explore their career. Um, they they worked on the same unit for 20 years <laughs> in the same people, the same type of patients. And so um, I think one of the things I like to do is uh, whatever our workplaces, I like to give nurses the encouragement to do something different. Nursing is a big, wide field. There's so many different things you can do to yeah. get out of that, that fatigue or that burnout. Um, you know, if you've been an ICU nurse, go down to the ER, try maybe uh, they insurance company use remote nurses now to where you look at charts and, you yeah. know, for approvals and, and denials for procedures and things to kind of take that stress off of you to kind of give you that time to breathe. But sometimes yeah. nurses are just afraid. They're, they're thinking that this is what I'm good at. This is all I know. And they're scared to take the next step. But if they did, then maybe they could fix some of that burnout that they're having. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I absolutely agree. And that's one of the things I, uh, again, another goal of this is that I want people to see that all that time and money and energy that you spent acquiring this education is not wasted. You don't have to stay where you are. There's a whole 
big yes. out there that you can just you can shift or you just need to have the courage to pivot. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So you started this business. First of all, it's called, if I remember, Greater Elevations. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So A, what kind of a business is it? Why did you start it? And why that name? Okay, so the name Greater Elevation started because I worked in hospice and I loved hospice. Um, I learned so much from the clients that I took care of at the end stage of life. Um, and when I did hospice, some of the patients that I took care of actually is what guided me to start my own business because they would talk to me about regret. You know, as they're facing the end of their life, they had a lot of regrets for things that they didn't do. So some of the gift they wanted to pass on to me and their family and their friends was do those things that you want to do because this is all we have. And you yeah. don't want to die with 20, a list of 20 regrets of things that you never, that you never wanted to do. So um, this is right when the pandemic was happening. And so I took the greater elevations as part of the hospice and so my symbol is the man climbing up the mountain and having the bird and the bird is the spirit that's released and how we get to the top of the pinnacle of life and then our spirit is released. But then when you look back down, you want to make sure that you you recognize all the challenges and things that you've accomplished and you've overcome. So that's where the name is, the greater elevation, trying to elevate yourself to a higher level across mm -hmm. all aspects, physically, mentally and spiritually. Mm hmm. Awesome. 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 And this is mainly your, your business. As I, I looked at it, it, it encompasses a lot. Initially, I thought it was um, primarily aesthetics, but there's a lot more to it than that. So tell me a little bit about it. Yeah. So I started out the business during the pandemic because again, I feel so lost and I saw some of the reasons why a lot of people were losing their life or getting really ill. And one of the issues was that people were not getting tested fast enough. People were going to drive in testing and they wait, waited three to five days to get their test results. By the time they got the results, they were too sick and had pneumonia. Mm -hmm. So the first part of the business was actually COVID testing and vaccinations. And I did COVID treatment in the office. Okay. And so that was my way that I could feel like I can help outside of the hospital system because what people don't realize is that within the hospital system, there were so many politics that were going on and the primary focus should have been on saving people. We were trying to do that, but within certain parameters that were set by, um, I hope mm -hmm. I don't get in trouble for this, by the government. <laughs> uh, <laughs> telling and telling us, you know, that we went to school and got this education and dictating and telling us what we can and cannot do to save someone. So I yeah. stepped outside and started incorporating that into the business. I work with two doctors and I believe that us together, we save a lot of people, hopefully. Okay. Awesome. 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 And then I see that you've expanded into things like IV hydration and CPR yes. and all this. So, you know, you're a full service, one-stop shop business, yes. pretty much. Yes. And so, <laughs> um, again, everything ties into COVID. Um, one of the things is that made me realize that a lot of us, particularly minorities, we have a lot of health conditions. Our business, yes, is cosmetic but it's all encompassing because I also focus on the inner health too. So yes, while I'm working with you on getting a flat stomach and everything, I'm also working on you from the inside with the IV infusion. I do the medical weight loss, um, encouraging people to, to get lose weight. So that way they can stop taking their diabetes medication. They can stop taking their high blood pressure medication. So um, the, the cosmetic part is the part that people see on my videos, but it's a lot more than that when they actually are in the office with me and they work with me. Yeah, I realized that when I looked at your website, um, there's a lot that goes on there. Even um, even though it's, it's, it's a website, there's, there's a lot that uh, piques the curiosity and, you know, um, <laughs> allows people to look a little further. So thank you for that. Yes, what, 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 so what, what would you say though, um, to, to come back just to nursing for a little bit, what is your vision? What would you say is your vision for nurses and nursing? Because I see that nurses, nurses today are not the nurses of 25 years ago. No. You know, um, nurses are beginning to find their feet and, 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 you know, stand firm and stuff like that. What would you say is your vision, though, for nursing, let's say in the next 10 years? What would you like to see? 
Um, I would like to see actually, you know, and I know that this would hurt the healthcare system as a whole, but I would like to see nurses being more independent because nurses are so important to healthcare, but we've just been seen as the person at the bedside to treat you when you're sick, to give you medications and things like that. But nursing is more, nursing is so much more than that. Um, I would love to see nurses more involved with the comprehensive care and the preventative care to help yeah. people before they get to the yeah. hospital. Yeah. Um, I think the nurses yeah. can really serve a, a big role in that. Us getting back to the natural healing of our ancestors and being able to um, know about those things is more than just taking a pill. Um, it's more about the diet and eating fresh fruits and vegetables and cutting out a lot of the high fructose corn syrup and things like that mm -hmm. that causes a lot of our health conditions. So I like to see nurses more in the beginning preventative and the comprehensive part because doctors, unfortunately, they're taught to treat with prescriptions. You're sick, I'm gonna give you a prescription and send you home, but nursing is compassion care and we see the person as a whole. So we're gonna treat you from all aspects and it's more than just a prescription. There you go, there you go, there you go. My big vision, and uh, you know, I want to see a nurse be surgeon in general. And then when oh. that happens, maybe you <laughs> <That'll be, laughs> <maybe. that'll be laughs> <cool. laughs> And then, you know, maybe we'll see something happen. What advice do you think you'd give to someone who wants to be a nurse? Um, I can only go by what I've seen here lately. And so what I've seen here lately is a lot of nurses, a lot of the people, a lot of the, the, the students that are going to nursing programs are looking at it from a money standpoint because it's a career and they know they can come out and make a, mm -hmm. you can almost make a six figure salary now. But mm -hmm. I encourage people from doing that because once you're in the field, you'll have that burnout within five years if you're only looking at it from the money because there's so many things that go into it. Yeah. Um, you have to have a pretty tough skin. Um, you have to have discipline um, of yourself because you're going to run mm -hmm. into situations where you're going to have family members upset, the doctor's mm -hmm. going to be upset. So mm -hmm. you have to really be able to have good discipline, self-discipline. Um, so I just, I, I feel like that maybe some of the newer people that are considering going into nursing need to shadow and, yeah. uh, you know, make that a requirement before you go to school and you enroll that you shadow a hospital yeah. nurse for at least two weeks to make sure that this is something that you really, that you really want to do. Um, because sometimes it's not an easy role to be in. Not at all, not at all, not at all. It's, um, it takes a lot out of you. And if, if, if what you're going into is for is the money, it's gonna kill you before you actually achieve what you really wanted. <laughs> yes. Not for nothing, but that's the bottom line. <laughs> okay, so lastly, but not leastly, they talk, there's a lot now of talk of, we're paying attention, a lot more attention to ourselves and our own self-care, because that is not something that was actually encouraged, taught, or even, you know, actually you were actually taught mainly, just put everybody else first, just do everything for everybody else. And well, if you fit somewhere, well, then so be it. Um, and we're beginning to shift that. that. So what does self-care mean to you? Uh, Self-care is doing something that you truly enjoy that's just for you. Um, you know, a lot of nurses have family. I'm not talking about going to get the kids and going to the park because it's not something that's just for you. Yes, you're going into a calm environment, but you got to watch the kids while they're in the monkey bars and things like that. So you have to be selfish and and think that it's okay. I mean, it's okay to be selfish sometimes and uh, really do something that's just for, for you. Uh, one of the things I've been studying is I've been studying a lot about vibrational energy and um, and I've had some profound things or thoughts. And so, you know, when people are sick, they have a certain energy about them. And when yeah. you're in the healthcare field and you're going room after room, all of that energy you absorb, you absorb their problems, you absorb everything that's going on and you have all of this in your, in all this negative energy and if you don't know how to clear that, then I feel like that, you know, if you're doing that day in and day out, you know, this person's ill, this person's ill, and you're piling on all of that, that, that negative energy, you have to be able to cleanse that. And so self-care is a part of that cleansing 
Uh, one of the things I used to do was whenever I got home, I would just sit in my car for about 15 minutes just to kind of decompress the day. Um, yeah get rid of all of that negative energy that I piled on myself from some family members, the doctor was upset. So I didn't want to take that into my home. You know, I didn't want to go to bed with that negative yeah, energy. Yeah. Yeah. So those are just a few things I'm really studying right now and starting to talk to some of my nursing colleagues about um to study and really learning how to do those energy releases. So it could be uh, something simple as taking a walk, listening to your favorite song taking 15 minutes to read a book to decompress. Yeah. So just finding that that time to do something that's totally for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, this is why I asked that question. I ask, I ask everyone that question because I really want people to, we say, you know, I really want people to think about it and articulate um, what that actually means because we know it means different things to different people. And you mentioned, you said very clearly, and I'm so happy you said that, that sometimes you have to be selfish. It has yes. to be... Um, just it has to be just about you. And you talked about the two things that you talked about that really resonated with me. Well, that was one, and the other one was just uh, you know the, this assimilating all of this energy from other people. Um, uh, there is a, there is a poem that I really really love, um, and it's written by a nurse. It's called Thirty Minutes and Thirty Seconds, Thirty Seconds and a Hallway. And it talks about pretty much just what you were talking about, how you, you know, you can go from room to room. Um, and in, in particular, maybe in this room, um, the, 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 the situation was really dire, you know, and you had to go, you finished here and you had to go across the hallway to another room where they just got good news. <laughs> and you cannot take this person who was here into that room. You cannot take that personality that you, you know, that empathy that you had for this one into that room. It's a totally different situation. And all it took you to cross that hallway was probably 30 seconds. And in that time, you have got to revitalize yourself, change that whole personality approach, uh, come with a whole different approach. And you do that over and over and over again during the course of a work day. It takes a lot out yes, of you. It does. It, it takes does. a lot. It does. And so, it's, um, yeah, it, yeah, it, it, it does. Yeah. And so it's, it's, and so for that, for that, I mean, that actually was the, the poem that started me asking about self, self care, because I, I thought about, I said, well, it really means, it really emphasizes just how important it is to pay attention to your own self, your own care. Yeah. You, you you just can't take care of anyone else if you're not if you can't take care of you yes and i like to revisit one of the questions that you asked me earlier and you asked me mm -hmm. about one thing that i like to see change and mm -hmm. i like to see more of that incorporated into the hospital system you know they feel like giving a nurse pizza and donuts is a thank you of gratitude or a part of, you know, and I really feel like maybe um, I worked at one place where they would have massage therapists come in and they would do massages. I really wish they would do a uh, vibrational where maybe you, know, you listen to certain energy frequencies and yeah, yeah. your energy. Maybe they had a quiet room with a recliner. It made yeah. it okay for nurses to go into a quiet space where yeah. it was dark. They can close yeah. their eyes for five minutes to really yeah. decompress. I wish the yeah. hospital and the healthcare environment would embrace those things, you know, because we do need that time. You know, we yeah. really do need that time. And, and yeah. start and, in mm -hmm. quiet rooms and things like that. Yeah. And longer breaks, longer or more frequent breaks, because you know what? A half hour break does not do it. A half hour break is the, is the break that keeps you looking at your clock. Looking at your watch, you know, because you that that's not a break. No, it's not. Yeah, it really, it's not a break. So. Uninterrupted break. The 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 because yeah. so many times you go on a break and people still come and find you to ask you yes. questions. Uninterrupted. If I want to go to my car, if I want to go walk outside, where I have thirty minutes uninterrupted. That is so oh, important. Right. Taking a break mm -hmm. is not taking a break all the time. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's exactly, that's exactly the point. That's exactly the point because as long as you're physically in the building or something, people seem to think that, you know, they have a right to. <laughs> you see the meal taking a bite of your lunch and somebody comes in and breaks, comes into the break room and saying, the doctor's on the phone. I mean, you know, you have okay. to put down, 
Yeah. 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 Exactly. <laughs> have them all back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I deal with it. Oh my goodness. Okay. Jacqueline, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for this. Is there any little gem you'd like to leave us with? Um I guess the only thing with that that I would say is that you can't you can't be fearful. You we can't we can't live our life in fear. Um I think that fear leads to regret. And really, truly, people say this all the time that, you know, YOLO, you only live once and people have all these profound sayings, but their life doesn't, their life doesn't reflect that. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, don't, don't, you can't be fearful of everything. And sometimes you have to kind of step outside of fear to really live. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a, that's a great note on which to end this. Thank you so very, very much for doing this, Jack. And I appreciate it. And wish right, you so much you. success with Greater Elevations. Okay, thank you so much. Mm -hmm.